Welcome to Reflections, a show that seeks to examine if others see God in your reflection and how Scripture relates to us in this day and age. Peace and all God's blessings be with you. I am Father Bob Janine, the pastor of Mission St. Sergius in Bacchus, an all-inclusive, welcoming, and affirming ministry of the Reformed Catholic Church, Franciscans of Mercy. Today we are going to be discussing the readings for the 25th Sunday of Ordinary Time. And they are based on the book of Amos from 1 Timothy and from Luke chapter 16. And as I always do, I invite you to please Open your Bibles. I know that most people, they all seem to have a Bible somewhere. Not quite sure where. I know we have it uh, because we write down the weddings and the funerals and the births and all of that. But we, you know, most people do not take their Bible and go through it and read it. And I encourage you, as does Pope Francis, to please open your Bible. That's why I try to let everyone know where the readings are coming from that I will be discussing. Again, this week, they come from the book of Amos, chapter 8, verses 4 through 7, from 1 Timothy 2, verses 1 through 8, and from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 16, 1 through 13. And this week's readings are very powerful and there's something that we really should think upon as we go along our highway of life. The first words from the first reading from the book of Amos tells us to listen to this. You who trample on the needy and try to suppress the poor people of the country. You who say, when will new moon be over so that we can sell our corn and the Sabbath finish so that we can market our wheat? Then by lowering the bushel, raising the shekel, by swindling and tampering with the scales, we can buy up the poor for money and the needy for a pair of sandals and get a price even for the sweepings of the wheat. The Lord swears it by the pride of Jacob. Never will I forget a single thing you have done. Never will I forget a single thing you will have done. You know, uh, I hate to say it, but that reading could almost apply to today. Listen again, listen to what I'm saying. You who trample on the needy and try to suppress the poor people of the country. And then it goes on and talks about all they're worried about is when can we sell and when can we make money, 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 money. You know, it reminds me from the song from Cabaret. Money, 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 money. Money makes the world go round, the world go round, the world go round. Yeah, you can't do much without money, sadly. Even ministries and churches need money to survive. Our simple ministry our monthly expenses run about $875, $880 a month, sometimes more. And, you know, we rely. Uh, we're working with elderly and seniors, nursing homes, and other facilities for the poor. So they don't have, even though some of them do try to give us something, when they can. It's money. That's what that first reading is talking about, how people 
are obsessed with making money and they really don't care about the poor. Let's get rid of them. When, when can we buy up the poor for money? Buy up the poor for money. And then the Lord, the Lord says, never will I forget a single thing you have done. That's what we're going to be judged upon. We're going to be judged on how well we followed the gospel teachings, whether it be the Old Testament, which the book of Amos is from, or the New Testament. They're both saying the same thing, that we need to feed the hungry, shelter the homeless, welcome the stranger, visit the sick, bury the dead. We, we need to be welcoming. Everyone thinks that the sin of Sodom and Gomorrah was carnal. It wasn't. It was because the people of Sodom and Gomorrah failed to welcome the strangers if you look at the book of Leviticus, it's right there. You must welcome strangers. In St. Paul's letter to Timothy, it says the following. My advice is that, first of all, there should be prayers offered for everyone petitions, intercessions, and thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. And especially for kings and others in authority so that we may be able to live religious and reverent lives in peace and quiet. Again, it's talking to us today. You know, at Mass, we have the petitions or the prayers of the faithful. And each week we pray for the church, for the Pope, for the government, and for people who are ill, sick, those who have passed away. We were told that we need to do this. We offer the prayers. And prayer, again, how many times have I told you all, you must pray. You should have prayer as an integral part of your daily lives. Prayer in the morning, prayer before meals, pray at evening, attend mass, receive the Eucharist. These are things that we have to do and the last paragraph of the gospel says, Jesus said to his disciples, the man who can be trusted in little things can be trusted in great. The man who is dishonest in little things will be dishonest in great. If then you cannot be trusted with money, that tainted thing, who will trust you with genuine riches? And if you cannot be trusted with what is not yours, who will give you what is very your very own? No servant can be a slave to two masters. He will either hate the first and love the second, or treat the first with respect and the second with scorn. You cannot be a slave both to God and of money. All of the readings are focusing on, again, how we need to live our lives. Are we following God's will? 
are we caring for the poor, the sick and the needy, the homeless, the immigrant, those who are escaping or are trying to escape all kinds of carnage in their home countries. You know, a century ago, people, my people, my Irish immigrants, my Irish family, were escaping, and many other Irish people, were escaping a pa potato famine and then the Black and Tan War. And they were looking for freedom and a better life. It's no different today. Whether you be Asian, Latino, or Latin American, it doesn't matter. They come here looking for a better life. And they, I know from experience, in our parishes in California, we had many, many immigrant people from Latin American countries. These people were hardworking. They took jobs nobody else wanted just so they could put food on their table and, more importantly, that they could make sure that their children were educated and many of them scraped to make sure that they could pay tuition to put their children in our Catholic schools so that they would have a good Catholic education. And yes, many of them were illegal, but they attended Mass every week, and you would see them every week. They would be putting something into that offertory collection. And they were there to help at every time we needed help, for every fair, for everything that we did. They were there. They would come and offer to clean the church, anything that they could do to help. They weren't, yes, they weren't freeladers. And yeah, maybe 1% of those people I doubt they were our parishioners, may have had illegal intents, but only 1%. The other 99% were good, hard-working people who were nothing, looking for nothing better than a better life for themselves and for their, more importantly, for their children. Christ gave us the guidelines. And they re basically was repeating what Jewish tradition held. What God had told the prophets. We constantly need to be aware of the needs of others. Remember the first reading. Listen to this, you who trample on the needy. Trample on the needy. That's very figurative. Picture it. Big boots trampling on somebody who's poor and needy. And suppress the poor of the country and are only worried about when you can make money. Money, 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 oh yeah. You know, I wonder how often people take time to thank God, not for the big things, for the little things. The ability to get up in the morning. You know, there are many people who can't get out of bed There are many people who don't have a job. There are many people who are in need, 
who don't have adequate health care, who don't have a, a decent meal, <coughs> excuse me, a day. These are the people that we need to worry about. These are the people we need to reach out and be the helping hand. We have had one of the most devastating hurricanes in history hit the Bahamas. The devastation is horrendous, unbelievable devastation. It will take many years for them to rebuild and some people just won't be able to do it. Lives were lost. Many lives were lost. Why? Why was it the most devastating hurricane to ever hit the mainland? Very simple. We have not been good caretakers of our planet and therefore we have global warming and it's causing the temperature of the oceans to rise to almost bathwater temperatures. Therefore, it helps to spawn even more powerful storms. And we have the glaciers are melting at an unheard of rate, causing the seas to rise because we don't care. We're not caring for our planet. God gave us this planet. He gave us and brought us into this world so that we could care for each other and care for the planet. The readings today are telling us that we need to refrain from cheating by selling goods at a far greater profit than necessary. And, you know, this is something else. Look at, here's an incident that happened not too long ago, a life-saving drug, if you will, that anyone and everyone with allergies must have, an EpiPen. The manufacturers raised the prices hundreds fold, almost a thousand percent just so the profit line could be greater. It wasn't that they weren't making a profit, they wanted greater profits. That's not right. And here, right here in Scripture, is where it's saying it. In short, we need to refrain from having excessive profits from any business dealings. Yes, every business has to make a profit. Why? Well, there's rent to pay. There's light, there's heat, there's salaries, there's insurance, there's health insurance that they should be paying for, for their employees. There should be maybe retirement benefits that they're paying into for their employees if they're a good company. If they're a company who's taking care of their people, they need to have a profit in order to do this. Then there are those of us who are nonprofits, churches, religious organizations, and charities like the Red Cross and the Jimmy Fund and others who need 
to have people be benefactors and donors so that they can take care of those that they're committed to taking care of. Care. That's what we need to do, take care. Very possibly we need to give serious thought to who we worship. Are we worshiping God, the Creator? Are we worshiping fame, fortune, and wealth? Where are our values? You cannot be a slave to both God and money. And those who are a slave to money usually have no respect for God or for anything that God has said. And I contend that's why maybe our country is in such bad shape. The one percent are making out fabulously. But the poor are getting poorer. The middle class is shrinking. We need to ensure that we are not trampling the needy and suppressing the poor of the country, but are sharing sharing the gifts that God has given us with those who are in need. We must continually be looking around to see where we can reach out and help. We need also to continually be praying for everyone, praying both with intercessions and with prayers of thanksgiving. We need to pray that the people in authority, in government of all the nations of the world will begin to look out for the majority and not the minority. Those who are merchants need to make sure that they're marketing their goods at a fair and equitable price and not at exorbitant profits. Government leaders need to look at the laws and see where they can make sure that those people who need help receive it. We don't need food stamps cut back, but possibly increased. We do need better, more accessible, more affordable health care. We need affordable housing. When I see places and houses and, and housing, I should say housing and houses, being advertised in millions of dollars, I wonder, who can afford it? I could not have the apartment that I have if my rent were at a market value. Fortunately, there are some federal programs, but not enough housing. There are federal programs where somebody on a low income will pay one third of their income for their rent. But the housing market 
for people for that kind of housing is poor. It's limited. There are waiting lists for every single low-income senior housing facility. There are waiting lists sometimes for years because there isn't enough adequate housing out there that's affordable. That's an area our government needs to look at. God desires us to be able to live, to be able to have a warm, safe, and secure place to live, to have adequate food, clothing, and shelter. That's the basic, and that's what every person, God expects every person to be able to have. But sadly, not every person does. Our society today seems more focused on attaining acquisition of things, material things, and seems to have more respect for somebody in fame and fortune, uh, for a, a football player or a great uh, singer, or recording artist, or movie star, or television star. They seem to get more respect and people go crazy.